Hey everybody, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I'm going to share with you our small entry room makeover that has a ton of hidden storage. Oh boy, this was one of those makeovers where I thought, okay, this is going to take me like two days max and then it turned into a week and then two weeks and then three weeks and it is finally done. But it seems like it was one of those DIYs where so many little things went wrong and it was getting so frustrating. But it reminded me that that's the nature of DIY sometimes. You probably are going to make little mistakes, but you can also probably fix those mistakes, learn something, and finish your project and be so proud. So I can't wait to share this one with you guys. I hope you love it and I hope you're inspired if you have a narrow hallway or a small entry like I do to add some extra storage into it. Let's get started. Here is what our front entry hallway originally looked like. Now, we built our home in 2013 ourselves, designed it ourselves. I mostly love everything about our home, except I don't like how small we made this entryway. The door is too close to the stairs, then it kind of goes into this narrow hallway, and we always get so many shoes piled up here, and I'm stepping over shoes, and it just is a mess. I left this messy so you can get the picture about how it kind of was looking like day to day. Ew. And then we have the hallway closet, so teeny tiny, no shelving in here, so everything was very messy and disorganized in here as well. So first things first, I went to Ikea again, love them for storage solutions, and I knew that I wanted to find some sort of shoe storage solution here. I had something in mind. First I found this little shoe rack, and, and I thought this would be the perfect thing to put in our closet, perfect dimensions. Then I looked at all their shoe cabinets. Now we used to have one in our front entry, got rid of that one, it was a little bit different style. But then I saw this one, a little bit modern, but I thought maybe there was a way that I could use it for our entry and I love that it was only about six inches deep, perfect. So back home I brought the stall shoe cabinet. I grabbed a couple of these because I had measured our wall and I knew that two of these IKEA stall cabinets would fit on the wall and I wanted as much shoe storage as possible. I have also used these not only for shoe storage but for accessory storage as well. So we use a lot of toques and hats and mitts here in Canada in the winter so these are great for that as well. They're pretty easy to put together like all IKEA furniture. You just need a couple tools, lots of patience, crank up the music and enjoy building. All right, so next I took my stud finder. I found a couple of studs on our hallway wall and then I made sure that I screwed the two stall cabinets right into the hallway wall studs so they were nice and secure. You don't have to use the holes that come with these cabinets. You can make holes in them anywhere you want and attach them to studs. Next, I took all of the drawer fronts and the cabinets, sanded them down with this little palm sander, and then I used some primer. This primer that I'm using is from Cloverdale, and it's a nice bonding primer, nice and sticky. So I primed both of the cabinets all the way around the frames. And to put the primer on, I just used a little foam brush. I just like the finish that I get with these foam rollers. I did the same thing with the drawer fronts. So I just uh, sanded them and then I brushed them with the primer with the foam roller. And just make sure if you're doing this to let everything dry as long as possible between coats. So after the primer was on, I took my favorite white, which is currently bare whisper white, and I painted the cabinets as well. Then I put the backings on. So you might be wondering, why are you painting the white cabinets white? It's because I wanted them to match the trim in my hallway exactly. They were a little bit off white to start with, so I wanted them to be the exact same color of white as my hallway. I don't know where I put the footage for this, but I did paint about uh, two thirds up my wall with Whisper White Bear in a satin finish. And then I'm going ahead and adding some baseboard onto the wall to make my DIY board and batten. So here's where the project started getting a little bit frustrating. So I nailed this piece down, but realized, okay, it's a little bit too low. It's covering the little screws on the light fixtures. Had to remove the whole thing, cut off the nails, and then I kind of loosened up those light fixtures and moved the trim a little bit and then I was able to pull the light the little light switches not the fixtures the light switches up and over the trim 
because I'm going to try to kind of bring these switches all the way out and forward so that I can trim around them. Now just be careful if you're working with light switches that you're very careful with uh, live wires. Make sure everything's turned off so you do not electrocute yourself. So I won't go into all the details of my DIY board and batten. I essentially use trim, my nail gun, and a lot of wood filler and caulking. I do have a full tutorial for this on my YouTube channel and my blog, and I will link to them down in that description box below. Next, I went ahead and took off all the beautiful art from my girls off of this wall. I'm going to come up with some other sort of art system, so stay tuned for that. I just made sure to save everything for the new art wall. I took off this mirror as well because we're going to put a mirror on the other wall soon. Can't wait to show you. And then one thing turned into the next, and I decided that this wall also needed board and batten. Then I took some wood filler and I filled uh, that little crack in between the two shoe cabinets because I wanted to make them look like one shoe cabinet. I used wood filler on all the cracks on my board and batten as well to make everything look nice and finished. Now this is so time consuming but it sure does look a lot better in the end. Then I sanded all of the wood filler down to make sure all the joints were nice and smooth. I had to sand down a little bit of this trim on the left to make it match up. And then here's how I went ahead and trimmed around the uh, switch box to make it stick out from that wall and match the trim. Once everything was wood filled and sanded, I took a caulking gun and I caulked all around where the trim meets the wall. So wood filler and caulking are like my best friends when it comes to DIYs because even if you do mess up a little bit with measurements, you can fill in all those cracks and joints, smooth everything out, and then once you paint on top of that, it looks so good. And this is how I made my shoe cabinets look built in. I just brought the trim down to the top of the shoe cabinets. Everything's going to be all one color and I think it's going to look pretty cool when it's all done. So once I did all of the filling and the sanding and the caulking, I took my foam roller once again and that whisper white bare color and painted everything. I find that after one coat of paint on any trim job, you can see if there's any sorts of holes or things you missed and you can fix things as needed. Then I got a little quart of Valspar seashell gray. So I accidentally painted too far up the wall. That was another thing that went wrong. And I had to buy a tiny little quart of this paint to cover up that accidental white that I painted. Then like all the rest of my board and batten, I'm finishing up the wall with a little piece of trim on the very top. I think this is one and a half inches by 1116 and I love the look. Then all of the light switch covers went back on and this I think looks so good when they're kind of floating up above the trim. All right, so once that wall was basically done, I went through our closet and I took out everything that could be donated that we weren't using anymore. Husband and kids helped me and we kind of purged a little bit. Same with the shoes. I went through all of those. We purged some of those, donated some of those, and I sorted out at the bottom of the closet and cleaned that up. In went the Ikea shoe rack, fit really well. Always make sure to bring your measuring tape when you're shopping for things for storage to make sure they fit nicely in your space. And then I went and put the taller things like the shoe, like the boots and the rain boots there. So I went to Walmart and I found these fantastic baskets. They were like the perfect size for our closet. And I loved how they had kind of that natural look with a rope on top. Two of them fit on the top of our closet. I just got some shelving from the Home Depot and installed it in the top of our closet and put some seasonal things in those baskets. As for the Ikea shoe cabinets on the east wall, I put all of the rest of our shoes in here. So I find that I can fit two adult sized pairs of shoes in here usually as you can see maybe not the larger ones that my husband has but two adult size shoes and then two or three or sometimes even four pairs of kids shoes in each of these it was time for this rug to go bye bye we've had it for seven years and then I went ahead and vacuumed the hallway in here and mopped it and made it nice and tidy 
okay, this mirror has to be my favorite piece in here. I found it at Wayfair. It's so big. It's like 36 inches wide. And I just love the scale for on top of the two shoe cabinets. I love a mirror that's about half the width of the console underneath it. Then on top of the cabinets, I put a basket to hold things like keys and phones, some faux greenery, some books, and a candle. I also found this runner from Wayfair. I'll make sure to leave it, a link to it, and everything else in this video that you can buy online down in that description box below. Love the turquoise and gray color combo, of course, and I also loved the length. I decided to put up a couple of prints here. These ones I found from the crown prints, little butterfly prints, just to add a little bit of interest to this wall, but not make it too overwhelming. So here's a reminder of how our entry hallway looked before I tackled it. And here is how it looks now. I am so ecstatic as to how this makeover turned out. I think that it's a really good combination of practical and beautiful. It offers us more shoe storage because we have the shoe cabinet, but the shoe cabinet is nice and narrow, so we're stay still able to walk through this hallway with ease and not feel like it's too cluttered. Even though I had a few troubles with all the trim work and some of the measurements and things, I was really happy with how this built-in look turned out. Here's a look at how our closet looked before, and now here is how our closet looks now. Again, storage and organization is everything, so I'm so happy we finally put some shelving in here. I really like the baskets for that seasonal storage, and definitely the shoes with the layers of shelves at the bottom work so much better. So in the baskets, I have things like sandals and seasonal things we're not using now in our Canadian winter, as well as other accessories. This giant mirror offers the perfect place to check hair and makeup before I leave. It also is a great place to use as a little catch-all for phones and keys. And of course, I'm absolutely loving all of this extra shoe storage for our family. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in those comments below what you thought of my entry makeover. I would love to know. And if you have any other ideas on how to add hidden storage to entries, I would love to hear that too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm gonna be sharing so many things here. And if you're a subscriber and you hit that notification bell, you're gonna be one of the first ones to watch. Thanks again for watching. And I'm gonna leave some more videos that I hope you guys will love right up here.